I want to explain to you that I am an authority that's burning up all authorities, including myself, you know, so that you can have your life without the imposition of these social structures that want to tell you how to live your life, right? Including how to do yoga and how you should do it and all the rest of it. We're, built, we're building a big bonfire and I'm poking that bonfire with a stick to make it burn and we're putting all the world structures of Noah's in that bonfire and then I'm going to throw my own stick into that fire and go to the beach. <laughs> right? So that you can live your life as your life, as yourself, as the power that you already are. Right? <clears throat> and use the tantras that came from the ancient wisdom traditions of pre-doctrinal, you know, pre-authority. These were shamanic people who had no interest in secular power structure, not even knowledge of secular power structure because it hadn't been invented yet, who had no interest in male dominance and not even any knowledge of it because it hadn't happened yet, right? Shamanically, the power of this cosmos was simply, you know, male, female in collaboration, one empowering the other, one receiving the other, you know, in a mutual embrace. Is yoga, is the power of this cosmos, is the nurturing force of this cosmos. That's what they were doing. <laughs> it's true that that got codified into the tantras between the 8th and the 13th century. You know, it is a thing. It was there for thousands of years, but it was activity that was by you know ordinary people, you know mainly agricultural shamanic people, that held this yoga and developed it, evolved it over thousands of years. It got nothing to do with authority, nothing to do with the way it is, you know. And I want you, as a modern woman, to be completely relieved of all of that imposition and be the Dakini, the sky dancer that you actually are. You are the power of this cosmos. You are pure intelligence. You are unspeakable beauty. You are in perfect harmony with the entire cosmos. Stars and unknown stars. <laughs> Sun and moon. Air and light. The beautiful plant kingdom of Mother Nature. The waters. <laughs> this is your context. Male-female collaboration and same-sex or opposite-sex intimacy, that power is yours. And you're allowed to have that. No white male <laughs> or brown male is going to tell you how to live your life anymore. So it's good. I think it's good that you have issue with authority. And even good that you have a little caution here. You know, my teacher, Desika Chai, his line was, Always hold the teacher at arm's length. Make sure they're not conning you into some charming scheme of, you know, where you think you need what they're selling. You know? You're not second to anybody. You cannot be. It's a social contrivance. You're the power of the cosmos. You can't be second to anything. It's not even possible. It's, an, it's a thought structure in the mind that created civilization. You with me? And I, look, as a student of Krishnamacharya, him a student of the tantras, a student of the entire religious tradition of his own world, comes and says, yoga, this, 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 inhale, exhale, strength receiving, <laughs> you know, above to below. The body movement is the breath movement. The breath envelops the movement. Asana creates bandha, the intelligent cooperation of muscle groups in this male-female polarity that is the body, right? You cannot meditate. Meditation arises as a siddhi, as a gift of your sadhana. The sadhana is your asana and pranayama. Do that. <laughs> you know, so I just report dutifully. Thank you, sir. Report in this room what I got from him. They're just 
uh, a criteria by which you do your asana. They're not rules. You know, they're rules for you to play with, and then you explore them. If they work for you, as a, a dakini, they work for you. That's all. And you'll pass them on. But there is no right way. <laughs> There's nobody coming to save you. There's nobody that you have to adhere to in rules of uh, lifestyle and practice. Your life is yours. And you sit in the mandala and you sit in the chair of your own mandala and the beauty of this cosmos is radiating in front of yours and it's in front of you. And your consciousness is the bindu of your own mandala and your, you know, you, it's your mandala. And you don't have to get into my mandala or anybody else's mandala, right? Though I experienced this in Tibet recently. The, men, the Tibetan mandalas are so amazing. They were, you know, the, the, one of the wonders of this human world. And so they have these great abbots, you know, the great uh, Dalai Lamas, and, you, and they have these, the chairs that they sit in, and there's such beauty that radiates from those chairs. You know, and that imply the whole cosmos, the beauty of the, the cosmos. And what I saw is that the Dalai Lama was the only guy sitting in that chair, and everybody else is assuming that they're not in that man mandala. And so, again, it's just another power structure. It's a conning the people. It's an abuse upon humanity that there's only one guy in the in his own cosmic mandala, right? And I suddenly, re hang on a second, I'm in my own mandala. And I say that to you. you. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, you you think you're a, a dedicated, conscientious human life is trying to get into that somebody else's mandala, and you just don't have to. What a relief. So we're in a sort of a legitimate uh, rebellion against that. You know, like, fuck it, I'm not going to do my yoga, you know? No bastard's going to tell me how to do yoga or even tell me to do yoga. You know, that's a legitimate response, I reckon. So, you know, if you could get over that and know that spiritual transmission does occur, is possible of occurring in a non-hierarchical relationship of friend to friend, where the guru and the student are simply obviously arising in, a, in the one reality. You know, there's, it's not a hierarchy. But it, unfortunately, spiritual transmission has been turned into hierarchical activity that we should throw out of our systems. So I think, you know, you as a woman, you've been busy with that conundrum and legitimately throwing it out. You know? I just don't let anybody tell you how to live your life. Womenless men telling you, telling humanity how to live their life. Popes and priests and Dalai Lamas of all kinds, you know? You throw it all out. And then you decide what you do, you know, and decide on whether this, what I'm telling you, is this a male hierarchical lineage of control of people, or does this come from uh, non-hierarchical men and women in mutuality equals and opposites cooperating, collaborating with each other, where there's no question of, uh, even of progress, but only embrace of the given reality. No linear effort towards a future result at all. How wonderful, I reckon. Embrace of life. 